Pro tip is to remove that down there first. Hello, I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. I'm back again at my cousin Mike's house where we put a radon system in about a year ago. And when we did that, we sealed his sump basket and we also put in a water alarm. And I'm glad we did because that water alarm was going off last night. So we have bypassed the float switch. Uh, he does have a tethered float and just plugged the sump pump in directly so it, that the sump pump would cycle and we could drain that water alarm or drain that water level down uh, and get the alarm to turn off. So it is time to replace that tethered float switch. Uh, it just doesn't work very well in this setup. It's not long enough. And if we lengthen it, it hits the side of the tank. So just not a very good setup. It's not very reliable. So let's go ahead and replace that. And because we do have a radon system in this home, we have the cover sealed with silicone. So we are going to be removing that silicone, taking the cover off, installing the new float switch, and then resealing the uh, sump cover. So let's get started. All right, so we are gonna start with removing the four bolts. I've already taken a few of them out. And this access port is removable. You just remove this, loosen the red nut up and you can take this out. And that's where this morning I could see the water level was just a few inches down from the, the lid here. So I've got a couple more bolts to remove. All right, and then those zip ties we're gonna have to remove. We we'll remove the silicone from around the pipe and the cords so that it can easily slide it up. It looks like we do got a leak outside. This does discharge below ground. So I'm not sure if the pipe is broken up here or what's going on. But we'll start by uh, discharging this. So I've got the float here, and this is just not lifting high enough. So we could simply extend this float switch out. I don't think the float switch is bad, uh, but if we extend it out, then we got a chance of it hitting on the side of the tank. Uh, I don't like this style. Uh, just for that reason, it's easy to get caught up on things. So we are going to replace it with the hydro check one. And then what we've got to do is get this through the sump basket and then you just zip tie it to the discharge pipe. Uh, so my next challenge is going to be to try to get this through the pipe because I don't really have a hole that this will fit through. So I'll figure that part out and then we'll zip tie it and we can either remove the old one or we can just leave it because it won't hurt anything to leave it in there. And I guess we've got a backup to the backup if, if we need to. Pro tip is to remove that down there first. This is going smoothly so far. And we'll unplug that alarm or that sump pump so that it, I don't get a face full of water. Now we can get this guy through. I'm gonna put that through the hole from the top down. And then we'll reinstall the pipe. And then we'll re-zip tie some of the stuff on the pipe. I'm gonna get the water alarm and the new float switch in this zip tie. And the float switch does come with a zip tie. Just want to make sure I get clearance. All right, and then I can reinstall this. I'm going to want to make sure I tighten everything back up, and that's a 5 16. Um, if you don't have a check valve on yours, you do want one so your radon system isn't pulling air from outside. So I'll get that reinstalled and then kind of pull the slack out of these uh, wires here, and then I'll adjust the height of my float switch. So kind of get that sump orientated so that it'll still work if we want to use that. 
is kind of a backup float switch. And now I'll lower my sensor and water alarm to get that at the level I wanted at. When the water gets about this height is when it'll turn on. Right now I want to be a little bit lower than that. It'll turn on about right at that height, which I think we'll call good. And we'll get our water alarm in place. We want that to be maybe just above our float switch. So we got a little bit of an early warning device like we had before. I think we're pretty close there. Okay, so there's about how we want it lined up. When you take yours apart, um, you might want to put like a reference mark on the floor with a sharpie so you can see how you had it orientated before. It might save you some trouble. So it looks like everything there will line up. And now what we're going to do is this is the problem we had is this is the float switch. So when that float rises, it gives this power, which then um, allows the sump pump to run. So this is what was not going up all the way, so it wasn't turning the sump pump on. So we're going to get rid of this, I think they call it a piggyback switch. We'll leave it here again since it's not hurting anything. And then this is the new one. So this plugs in and then this will plug in. So when water touches that sensor, uh, it will then give power to the sump pump. So that's how that one works and it's got a red light when it's not working and a green flashing light when it is when it is pumping. And then some of these have alarms as well. I don't remember if this one did or not, but we'll put a link to this and some of the other things that we use in the description below. So I'm gonna let this system run a little bit and get this glued back together and make sure everything works properly. And then I'll come back and cut off those zip ties and um, silicone this down. And you wanna make sure that you remove the old silicone uh, before you apply the uh, new silicone down. And then you want this to also be dry. So another reason for me to wait on this, but that's how you uh, get a sump cover off and add a float switch. Um, so you don't always have to replace the whole sump pump. All right, I've got everything uh, back together now. I got it tested. The sump pump works perfectly. I like the level that it's at and the water sensor or the water alarm. So now I'll just put the cover back on. I'll pull the slack out of all the wires as I do so. We'll put the four bolts back in. And I did re-glue this fitting and uh, I did push the pipe out from outside, in from outside, so I had some more um, to glue that 90 on with. I don't think it was full depth before, which is probably why that uh, failed. This cover back in, or this plug, test plug, access port. All right, and that's that. We've got the new float switch installed and set to the correct level, as well as the old water alarm. I've got the cover re-siliconed down, so we don't have any whistles or leaks there. I've got the test plug reinstalled, and I've got this uh, inch and a half pipe glued back on here. I did use glue and primer, and I think the failure here is that the fitting wasn't on all the way uh, the first time this was glued. So I did pound this in from outside, and that gave me um, the ability to get full insertion on this fitting. So we should be good to go. I'll keep an eye on it, but we've got two water alarms, so we've got some redundancy there, which is always a good thing. If you would like to purchase any of the items that you saw in this video or any of the other items that are some of our favorites, we'll put them in the description below. And until next time, I'm Jesse with American Radon. Thank you so much for watching.